Hi, I'm Ben Canning. This micro lecture is on snapshot diagrams. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, one to two sentence summary, and follow-up questions on Google Forms. The objective for this micro lecture is going to be to describe evidence of constant velocity in pictures. Which leads me to the first question that I want to open up this micro lecture with, which is, how do we show motion in a picture or a diagram, let alone constant velocity or constant motion? Just how do we show motion in general? Well, we've got a picture here of a woman walking, and so this is actually a good example. So while this is a single picture, we can see that there are multiple snapshots of this person as we go through this picture or look from left to right. And as a result, we can kind of see what her motion looks like. Well, in physics, that's how we're going to show motion in a picture or a diagram, is we're going to show multiple snapshots on the same picture or diagram so we can see the position of that person or thing over time. All right, well, the next question is, now that we know how to show motion, how do we show or know if something is going a constant speed or if we know it's going in a constant direction too, then that would mean a constant velocity. So think about it for a second. Well, if you took a snapshot each second, so we've got a snail here and it's going from left to right, and we've taken a snapshot each second, and we can see that the spacing in between these snapshots is about the same, that means that the snail is going about the same speed the entire time. And really, we would just kind of average it out and say it's going the same average speed over time. That's because if we're taking a snapshot each second, then we know that each second is going about the same distance which means it's going the same speed each second, or sorry, the same distance each second, which means it's going the same speed. Now, technically speaking, I kind of hinted at this, this is an average speed um, because we don't know the snail's speed in between each photo, so it could have changed a little bit, but on average, its speed is staying about the same in this top photo because the spacing is staying the same. Versus down here, we can see that in this yellow snail picture, um, the spacing is changing, and so therefore the average speed or average velocity would be changing. So just to recap, same spacing if we're taking multiple snapshots means constant velocity. Now, if we have a changing spacing, whether that's increasing or decreasing, we have a changing velocity in this case. And we'll talk more about that uh, next unit when we talk about acceleration. All right, now real quick, let's go over the requirements for snapshot diagrams in physics. The first requirement is that you show the time of each snapshot. So you need to say t equals, and then where you're starting, maybe it's at zero seconds, maybe you're starting a little bit into this at one or two seconds. But regardless, for each snapshot, you need to say what the time is that it's taken, and it should be even timing in between them. You need to include labeled velocity vectors for each snapshot. So showing us the size of the velocity. Um, so in this case, since the velocity is staying constant, we can see that the velocity vector is staying the same size. If the velocity vector were, or the velocity was changing, like either getting faster or slower, we would show velocity vectors that are bigger and smaller, depending on whether it's getting faster or slower. Now, last but not least, if we know the value of the velocity at that time, then we need to actually go ahead and include that in the label. So the three major things are showing the time of each snap snapshot, showing the labeled velocity vector for each snapshot, and including the velocity values. Now, it's important that you label this as a velocity vector because later on we're going to start using other vectors to describe the motion as well, and so we'll need to know what type of vector it is. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, one to two sentence summary, and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms, please.